Here we are in the heart of Manchester, a great city in its own right, and behind us is the Town Hall, one of the finest town halls in Europe, if not the world. It was built in 1876 and is one of the finest examples of Victorian Gothic architecture. It's deceptive. It's got three sides and a massive great hall. It has all countries which Manchester traded with, all their flags, their symbols and great murals from Ford Maddox Brown. And set in the floor is the symbol of Manchester, the bee the symbol of enterprise and industry. Its history goes back a long time, back to Roman times when it was a fort and to the Middle Ages when it was a small town, when the cathedral here was the centre of its activity, which was led to by one of the few remaining parts of medieval Manchester, Hanging Bridge, which led from Market Place here, connected to the Hanging Gate. The museum is the National Museum of Democracy in the UK, and we celebrate the achievements and the histories of ordinary working people in this country. So if you come along to the People's History Museum, you can find out all about the history of democracy, all about the history of people from the Greater Manchester area, and celebrate their achievements. We are now inside the John Rylands Library, one of Manchester's most impressive buildings. It appears as if it's a medieval cathedral with stonework um, and sculptures and wonderful wood. In fact, it's not. It's from the 19th century. It's Victorian Gothic. But it has a very interesting history because it's dedicated to the memory of John Rylands, who was quite a character, a businessman in the area. After ascending the magnificent Victorian Gothic stone stairway, worthy of any medieval Gothic building, we are now about to see the treasures of the library in the main reading room through these doors here. And indeed, within these walls are some of the most valuable books in the whole of the United Kingdom and indeed some of the rarest books in the world. But looking over the books in the library is the lady who endowed uh, this library and building. That is the statue of Enriqueta here. We're now inside Chetham's, one of Manchester's most ancient buildings, which goes back through the mists of time to the 16th century, when uh, it was the uh, headquarters of the bishops of Manchester. And there are some fascinating characters who have been bishops of Manchester. One um, in that time was John Dee, who was a favourite and close personal friend of Queen Elizabeth I, who she made Bishop of Manchester. The library uh, had chained books for the public to use. It wasn't only in modern times people were concerned about uh, things being nicked, misappropriated, but it was then as well. But the books in this very room, which were chained, of the 55 uh, which were endowed by Humphrey Chetham, 51 still remain. So chaining books was a good idea, just as now people use it for chaining bikes. The Royal Exchange was the heart of Manchester's great trading past. When cotton was king in Lancashire, and when this hall traded more cotton than virtually anywhere else in the world. It's a hall with a uh, interesting history because it was bombed in the Second World War, but it rose again like a phoenix to trade again. Unfortunately, by the time of the late 1950s and 60s, the cotton trade had declined in Lancashire and in the country. And sadly, a few years after it reopened after, um, after the Second World War, in the 1960s, it then closed. And it's very sad to see, on its last day of trading, fixed in time forevermore, the trading board records that last trading day and the last prices of trading of cotton. So you've seen some of the iconic buildings in the great city of Manchester.